very kind of you, Raphael. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here in San Diego, and before I start off, uh, I'm very excited to talk to you about what NOAA Blue Tech is doing for the American blue economy. I want to thank Michael Jones uh, for inviting me out here and allowing me to be a participant in this great Blue Tech Week. It's really fantastic to be here. And, um, you know, I, I love San Diego. I love this city. I've spent over 11 years of my Navy career here. And um, I, uh, let me ask you, who's a resident of San Diego or San Diego County? So this still applies, right? America's finest city? Yes? <laughs> definitely. I, I enjoyed every minute here. And in fact, uh, the very first assignment I had in the Navy after I graduated from the Naval Academy was to go get a graduate degree at Scripps, a master's degree and, uh, in La Jolla. And, and so um, uh, that was just a great way to start off. And, uh, and it turns out I wasn't good enough the first time, so I came back to get the PhD a few years later. And in between that, I had a tour on the USS Peleliu, which was an amphibious assault ship stationed at the 32nd Street Naval Station. And then, uh, and then actually I had a follow-on tour sometime later, uh, working at the Navy SEAL headquarters in Coronado, uh, which was just a terrific place to be. And I ended, ended up getting a house there, and I owned that house for about 20 years. So you, you missed Raphael, the most important part of my bio, and that was being a San Diego resident, <laughs> which I definitely enjoyed. And so, um, you know, and it's here, San Diego County, where I really got my, my first taste of uh, oceanography. I was growing up in Los Angeles, and I'd come down every September for the La Jolla Rough Water Swim, one of the largest rough water swim competitions in the country. And uh, that's when I heard or found out about this place called Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And when I saw what they do for marine science, marine blue science and technology, I was hooked. I, I aspired to go there ever since I, I first heard about it, and that's why I went to the Naval Academy, I majored in oceanography, and I worked my tail off to get the one graduate scholarship to Scripps uh, where I got to go. So the rest is history. Here I am. I couldn't be happy with it. But uh, let's talk about this. Why are we here today? Uh, first off, I know that I saw the moniker here, blue, uh, promoting blue tech and, and blue jobs. And then I also saw that part of the program uh, is, is talking about fostering industry solutions to uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And all good. But let's step back even a bit higher, okay? And, and I, will, I will make a, uh, a claim here. And I will say that just like in the first, or the, the, the last half of the 20th century, it was called the space age with our rapid increase in, in, in capabilities uh, to go into space and land on the moon, I will posit that this first half of the 21st century is the ocean age. And let me explain why. Just look at some of the numbers. Over the last 25 years, maritime activity has increased around the world 400%. Uh, you all know the numbers, 70% of the Earth is covered by water, 80% of the world population lives near it, 90% of all trade goes over it, and 99% of all information goes under the ocean via undersea cables. So that's, that's that. And then you have the fact that one half of US territory is underwater in our exclusive economic zones. And that coastal regions are home to 40% of the population, 120 million. And those regions are the fastest growing in the country. And think about this, since 1980, uh, the average population increase around the country has been uh, in the interior has been 26 people per square mile. That number for the coast, times that by five, it's 160. So the coasts are growing, ocean activity is growing, our dependence on the oceans is growing, and this Blue Tech Conference couldn't come at a better time. So your takeaway is this. As the ocean grows more and more important, and uh, just try, this is what I want you to remember out of my talk, um, that so does the potential for it to do great things for our country and our people. And so as the administration has prioritized returning to space, represented uh, here on the, on the left by the space launch system of NASA, uh, this administration is also refocusing towards the oceans through NOAA and our work in Blue Tech. And that's represented by our Deep Discover ROV you see there on the right, which right now as of this minute is diving about 1,500 feet below the surface just off Puerto Rico. Uh, on the, from the ship Oceanus Explorer. And you can Google that right now and you can live stream some of the awesome video from that uh, magnificent vehicle. More to follow about that. But here, I'll talk to you a bit about what NOAA is doing in the blue tech world. And 
its focus, our focus is on meeting our two top priorities that are outlined in the Department of Commerce's strategic plan, uh, represented by the top image on the right, weather and water. And we're talking about minimizing the impacts of extreme weather and water events uh, on our country and our citizens. The second one, represented by the lower right, is blue economy, what we're all here today for. And so I'll elaborate a bit on both. First, on the weather and water priority, uh, what we're talking about is implementing an act the President signed last April, the Weather Research and Forecasting Innovation Act. And it's very detailed in doing the things that we need to do to get better in our warnings, our predictions, our fire weather, for example. Right now, there's a red flag issue, warning issue for Southern California. And uh, it's predictions like that that help protect lives and property. And we're doing fantastic things now. I think many of you have heard in the news about this debate, whether our model, the US model, is any good and can beat the Europeans. Well, I'll tell you what. This hurricane season, we've been doing it. For Hurricane Lane out in the Pacific, Hurricane Rosa just off Baja, Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Michael, we have been beating the Europeans. And we're going to leave them in the dust as we get better and better. We're transitioning. No joke. No joke. We are transitioning and our, our newest next generation model the end of this year, and, uh, and that experimental model has been uh, showing fantastic skill. And so uh, I'm really excited about this priority, but uh, you'll see this supports the blue economy too, because weather is really important for all various sectors uh, on the ocean and coast and Great Lakes. But here I'll talk to you about um, the, uh, uh, the specifically why we're here today, and this blue economy priority of ours. Now we, we've defined it as increasing the sustainable economic contributions of our oceans, coasts, and Great Lakes uh, through NOAA's data and services. And we, we're looking at four major pillars here, uh, kind of going clockwise from the upper left. Seafood production, so it's fishermen, fishing industry, seafood producers, processors, and even uh, restaurants at the end of the, the value chain. Upper right is maritime transportation, so it's shipping, our U.S. seaports, like the Great Port of San Diego. It's cruise industry, which is absolutely booming, and I was really pleased to see the cruise ship import today, just in front of my hotel room here. Uh, on the lower right, you see, uh, I represent tourism and recreation, and that actually is my youngest daughter, and uh, we're telling the other two, other two girls in a tube on the Chesapeake Bay, and I'll tell you what, I got a lot more mileage on the San Diego Bay when they were younger, and I loved it. So we're talking about coastal tourism and recreation, and then the lower left, uh, this is the ocean exploration piece, and you see an image representing taking a sample in the deep sea from our uh, remotely operated vehicle, which I showed earlier. So let me expand a little bit about these and how blue tech is empowering all these aspects of the blue economy. First off, on seafood competitiveness, what we're talking about here is removing, reducing, eliminating our seafood trade deficit. We have a $16 billion seafood trade deficit even though we have the largest or second largest, depending upon how you define them, easy in the world. And, and so that just doesn't sit well. And the, get this, we import 90% of the seafood we consume. And so that just doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit well with my boss, the Secretary of Commerce. And so we're undertaking a number of things that involve some great blue tech uh, to right that ship. Uh, we are growing uh, our aquaculture in federal waters. And Don Kent's here in the front row, and I'm going to go visit him and his facilities tomorrow and talk about how we can make it a lot easier for aquaculture uh, to be permitted and thrive in federal waters. It's about maximizing the wild cop fisheries uh, sustainably. And, and we're doing that through deregulation based on better science. Better science improves stock assessments using drones, using electronic monitoring, using uh, genetic sequencing and analyses uh, that are fantastic work that I'm going to go see this afternoon at our NOAA Southwest Fishery Science Center. Raise your hand if you're an employee of that center here. Russ, good to see you here. I can't wait to see your team. And so uh, it's that, and it's also increasing our exports, making sure that our fishermen have more access overseas through better trade agreements. Uh, so that's, that's the seafood piece. Marine transportation, maritime transportation. Uh, this is a very exciting one. And um, you can see this port is well suited towards it uh, with not only uh, the cruise industry, uh, but I remember our seeing several other um, shipping assets around during my time on the bay. And, and so what we're talking about here is DeNOA's data, our precision navigation capability, 
we have we, we perform these high depth navigation surveys that are allowing USC ports to, to grow and allow deeper draft vessels in. We also combine that with our, our traditionally uh, environmental sense data, for example, tide water levels or uh, currents as well as air gap uh, altitude below uh, bridges like the Coronado Bay Bridge. I remember having to go under that on the USS Peleliu at low tide, stepping down the mast, just squeaking under it. So there you see that data that we provide is really important to maximize the efficiency of our US seaports. And so there's great technology behind that too. I mean, the multi-beam systems that we have, uh, that we're doing surveys with now, they're, they're like, they were like the optical cameras I was using when I was growing up. It's just the resolution is extraordinary. And so there's that. The third part is tourism and recreation. And there is no better place, uh, based on my time here, to talk about that than here in San Diego, in San Diego County. Best beaches, I would claim, uh, around. And so promoting the uh, coastal recreation and tourism through our water quality analyses, our, our environmental information, our weather forecasts, our national marine sanctuaries. These are 13 underwater parks, one including the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary just up north, that uh, also bring in, like the Port of San Diego, $8 billion of economic activity every year. Uh, so there's great work there. And then lastly, exploration, mapping, and uh, characterizing our exclusive economic zone and our extended continental shelf. All very important work to harness the great economic potential of these areas, one half the size of the U.S. And we are finding every day seamounts like the one you see depicted, uh, which we surveyed this year in the Clarion Clipperton Zone, just off of uh, um, uh, Southern California. And, and so, in fact, the Ron Brown that just finished a world cruise, the NOAA ship Ron Brown, uh, surveyed over a dozen seamounts just like this one that had never before been uh, discovered. And so it's that. There's, other, there's several other specific payoffs, benefits uh, that our ocean mapping and exploration program yield. And I'll 